Virtual reality holds a key to the evolution of the human mind with a vision of the future. I have a game in my house that you might like to play. Would you like that? Yeah. Okay. Virtual reality has been getting a lot of attention lately. It is certainly an in vogue subject, but I feel that it's being criminally overlooked for what might end up being one of its most important applications, and that's brain training and making you smarter. Lawnmower Man had it right. So how might virtual reality make you smarter? Why do I think it's going to be a crucial tool for brain training in the future? Well, to understand the answer, the first thing you need to understand is what brain plasticity is and what its role in our intelligence is. I've talked about this on this channel before and of course on my website. Brain plasticity describes the ability for our brains to form new neural connections, to birth new neurons, generally to change shape in response to the way we use it. It's much like training your biceps and your pecs will make them larger. Training certain brain areas by using them more will make them get larger too and result in the um, respective improvement in your cognitive ability. So there are many ways you can increase brain plasticity and that's something else I've talked about in the past. But for all intents and purposes our brain plasticity slows down a lot once we reach adulthood. And there are many theories as to why this is but generally people tend to accept that once we reach a certain age a kind of switch um, switches in the brain and we become less plastic. We've reached adulthood and so much like our growth plates close over and we stop growing, so too does our brain plasticity, brain plasticity slow down. Um, you can see this in a lot of psychological theories even that don't reference brain plasticity such as Chomsky's language acquisition device. He believes that after a certain age it becomes more difficult to learn languages and we would certainly probably say that our own experiences reflect that. But I think that there's a possible alternative thing going on here. It's not the fact that we reach a certain age that prevents us from being able to learn so much. It's actually the fact that at that age, we stop needing to learn so much. So when you learn a new subject, or when you try and learn a new language, or when you try and take up electronic engineering at any age, your brain responds by producing more of the neurotransmitters that regulate brain plasticity. So you produce more dopamine, um, more BDNF, that's brain-derived neurotrophic factor, um, more nerve growth factor, etc. These are the chemicals that make your brain more plastic. So if you were to start learning a new subject right now, your brain would produce more of those chemicals and you would become better at learning as you practice learning. Now imagine being an infant, you're born into the world and suddenly you're thrust into this reality. You have to learn how to walk, you have to learn how to talk, you have to learn what the things you can see all are and also how you're able to move in that space and how your senses synchronize. You're learning how to balance and how to interact with people and you're learning your own body. So just everything is new. So your brain is flooded with new information and that means it's learning at a rate that it never will do again. And so your brain is flooding itself with uh, brain-derived neurotrophic factor and dopamine and all the things that it needs to become as plastic as possible. It's as though you were learning a million new languages at once. So that might be why it's more plastic in childhood and then it might also explain why it kind of tapers off as we get older because we become more familiar with our world. We learn how to walk around and how to interact with people and then this continues more and more as we get older. We learn to drive, that's new, we learn new subjects at school, we learn how to interact with people and we might go off to college or we might start an apprenticeship, all learning all new stuff but gradually we know how to drive and we've learned how to interact with people, we stop meeting new people, we stop traveling so much, we get into a rut and so the brain becomes less plastic because it has less reason to learn and so when we try and learn something new, it's more difficult. So this is a problem with the way many of us live and simply by learning new things and continuously taking on new challenges, we can make our brain more plastic. So basically we're learning how to learn and we become better at picking up any new skill or any new information. But with virtual reality, it might be possible to take this a whole step further by forcing the brain to adapt to entirely new realities. So imagine a world where you're moving, but 
every movement is backwards and where things are moving quicker and where you don't know what anything in your environment is and where your senses are merged. You could create whole new synesthetic experiences or you could create a world where you see yourself from the third person. Imagine moving and seeing yourself move from the third person. It would force your brain to shift the way it works and to learn almost as much new in terms of um, how to interact with these virtual realities as it did do when it was born into our reality. Not to quite the same extent because you've got this foundation of knowledge to work on and you know you're in VR and you're not going to be subjected to that permanently, but just this huge wash of new information to learn and a new um, modes of moving even through this world. There's one virtual reality game, I can't remember what it's called, where you're in a dream and you have to pedal along the ground with your hands. It's a great way of getting over the um, lack of uh, positional tracking in virtual reality um, at the moment. But basically, you could create whole new ways of interacting with these worlds and your brain would have to adapt to that. So just instead of just learning a new skill, you're learning a whole new movement and a whole new environment and many new stimuli. So that's how I think brain plasticity could be enhanced through VR by submerging ourselves into completely alien realities and forcing our brains to adapt. Then when we return to this one, we'll have some of that um, brain plasticity left over, some increased neurotransmitters to enhance our learning, and we might find it easier to take on new skills. So that's just my theory, that's my hunch, but uh, if I get my hands on a HTC Vive or perhaps their new standalone headset that they're making for Google Daydream, then maybe I'll have a go at making some entirely backwards and strange realities to see if that does confuse the brain enough to trigger some dormant plasticity. Anyways, it's a cool thought and I hope you found it interesting. If you did, then please like this video, maybe subscribe to the channel, um, leave a comment down below, I'd love to know your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next one. I talk on this channel about fitness, about brain training, about nootropics, technology, productivity, martial arts, you name it. So if that sounds good and you'd like to see more content like this, then I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton for watching and bye for now. <laughs> oh, Johnny Quest, do you really understand the entity you've unleashed upon your world?